What's up guys, Guff here. Today, we're doing something a little bit different from what we usually do. We're not modding cars today, we're modding computers. Computers and tech in general are things that we're pretty much obsessed about here at Albon. So we figured, let's make a video showing you exactly what the tech is behind the videos. So here's my current desk setup. It's nothing too crazy. I have a 15 inch MacBook Pro as my main computer, along with an LG 27 inch 4K display. I use a couple of cool peripherals that you guys may be familiar with. A pair of Audio-Technica M50Xs, a Ducky Shine 5 keyboard with Cherry MX Blues, and a Logitech G403 wireless mouse. Now, this setup is great and all, but we're long overdue for an upgrade. And in typical Mod Squad fashion, we're not gonna just go out and buy something that somebody else made. We're gonna build it ourselves. So here are all of the parts, but uh, what are they gonna go in? Well, we came up with something for that as well. This used to be a Power Mac G5. You know, the classic Pro Tower from Apple. But as you can see, we modded it a little, painted it an awesome shade of gunmetal, and well... We basically gutted it. Inside though is a full standard ATX motherboard tray, which should happily accept all of the parts we're about to throw at it. And speaking of parts, we've got some pretty awesome stuff going into this PC. Firstly, a Corsair H100i all-in-one water cooler. Then, a Corsair RM650X fully modular power supply. 32 gigs of G-Skill Ripjaws 4 DDR4 RAM. A 512 gig Samsung 850 Pro SSD. And for the brains, a Gigabyte Z170X UD5 motherboard paired with an Intel Core i7-6700K processor. And last, but most certainly not least, an NVIDIA GTX 980 Ti graphics card. I won't bore you guys with the details of building the PC itself. It was pretty standard fare. Now, granted, there was a bit of cutting, a bit of drilling, a bit of cussing, a bit of double stick taping, but in the end, it came out pretty decent. The end result was a pretty handsome looking rig, if I do say so myself but uh, with a few questionable solutions to some space problems, which uh, you'll tend to get in a custom case like this. Sketchy PSUs aside, setting up Mac OS on this thing was an absolute breeze, thanks to TonyMacX86.com, a forum that has a monthly updated build guide and parts guide that can guide you from thinking about making a Hackintosh all the way to installing every single driver and getting it running absolutely silky smooth. So what's the end result? Well, basically, this computer outperforms the MacBook Pro in pretty much every single measured test, uh, save for a few. Obviously in benchmarks like Geekbench 4, Unigen Heaven, the Hackintosh does pretty dang well. But what about real world things? like? Final Cut? Well, render times are cut down by about 10 to 20 percent depending on what you're rendering, and export times have been cut down from anywhere from 10 to sometimes even 50 percent based on what codec you're exporting to, and a couple other factors. Now granted, that comes with a little bit of a caveat. If you're exporting an H.264, it's going to take forever on your Hackintosh, and that is because Final Cut Pro 10 uses OpenCL on AMD chipsets to accelerate the export process, and well, if you're using Nvidia, you're kind of out of luck. That being said, I think the improved usability and stability with the Hackintosh over the MacBook Pro is well worth the small amount of extra time you're going to have to wait for each render. Plus, the dev community behind Hackintosh is always bringing out new drivers, updating texts, getting things to perform better and smoother while also making things more stable, and well, the same can't be said for Apple. Overall, the Hackintosh has been a hell of a learning experience for me and the guys here at Albon, 
And well, I'd probably do a couple things differently in the future. Maybe look at getting an AMD graphics card or something like that that's compatible that might help uh, Final Cut Pro render times and export times due to OpenCL being compatible and whatnot. But to be honest, I'm pretty happy with what we have now. And this thing is an absolute powerhouse. And well, that's about it guys. If you guys have any questions about this Hackintosh or Hackintoshes in general, just drop a comment below. I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. Um, if you guys want more info, hit up TonyMacX86.com. I'll drop a link in the description. I'll also drop links to all the parts that I used in this build. And of course, if you guys like this new tech stuff that we're doing, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more of our content, which is, I guess, tech videos. And of course, the car videos that we are known for doing. So thanks for watching guys. See you guys in the next video. Later.